Hey, what's up investors? Uh, today I wanted to talk about the whole idea of getting free real estate properties and uh, just acquiring hundreds of properties uh, free and clear where you get all of your money back out. A lot of people have heard these strategies pitched all over the place. The Burr strategy where you buy and then renovate a property and pull it out through a refinance, getting all your money back and having a free deal. And then like subject to and seller financing, you know, the, the teachings of like Pace Morby and such, and you, where you get properties for free and such. And I want to let you know the truth about it, which is it is 100% possible. Uh, I have actually done it twice. Um, I've, I've gotten about, I think my 17 properties, got about three deals for free, um, essentially pulling out all of my money so they were free uh, at the end of it. But I will say this, as a beginning investor, you are probably not going to be able to do it. And so if you go in with this idea that you can take a very small amount of money and then uh, jump into real estate investing and uh, get, but, but you're not worried because you're gonna take this small amount of money and you're gonna get the property for free. You know, you saw it online, you saw it on Pace More, you saw it on Bigger Pockets, you're gonna get that property for free. So it doesn't matter, you can go ahead and just dive into it. I will say that you need to pump the brakes a little bit and uh, probably rethink your strategy just somewhat. You have to be in a very solid position. Here on this channel, I often talk about how I started with $500, and that is true. A lot of people ask me, how much money do you need to start in real estate? Technically, zero. I just mentioned you can get properties for free. I have done it. They have done it. These people who have flipped hundreds and hundreds of houses, all right, or have gone through all these deals, they are doing it constantly, all right? But they have a number of advantages over you, all right? And the number one is they have the reps in, okay? That's the, that's the biggest thing. They have the practice in, and all that practice and training. but. I'm going to go into a second one that they have, and that is a little bit more of a stability to be able to screw it up. Okay, so let's talk about my journey, all right, and where I started. I started with $500, sure, but I also began, once again, I was started off with house hacking, so I brought my expenses to near zero by removing my rent from the equation. I have a very cheap car. Okay, I never buy a car over $15,000, and even then, I'm like, usually that's too expensive, despite how much money I make. I mean, at this point, making over $350,000, I still, once again, have a cheap car. I don't care. Um, so I reduced that. And then, uh, you know, no credit card debt, no, no, uh, none of that. No student loans. I don't have any of that. So I gave myself a stable position, but then I also had private lenders. So I ended up finding people, talking to them for like six months to get private lenders behind me. It wasn't that many and they weren't millionaires or anything like that. It's just people who were offering like $10,000 and, and I had to pay it back aggressively on the first deal. But the most important part is though, I had a safety net. I had a backing. I have too many investors coming to me who have like tons of credit card debt and you know, a low income job maybe and they have a bad situation and they're like thinking re they're gonna buy real estate to get themselves out of that situation. And it's okay that they're gonna do that because uh, real estate's free. If you do it right, then real estate's free. If you do it right. Like that, that's, that's the big key. What is it that we know how to do? What does I know how to do after 17 properties that you don't know how to do? Why? I know construction. So do Pace and so do Brian Pineda and all of them. They have construction, they have crews, they have reliable people. You know how hard it is to find a reliable contractor, especially as a new investor not knowing anything? But let's say you have that. You have that one piece of the puzzle. Congrats. Uh, they have you know, the title companies and the lenders to make all that possible and to make it possible at the best rates because they have proven that they're effective and so they get better rates than you will as a new investor. You're gonna get hammered hard on that. Um, they know how to acquire the deals better than you because they have hundreds of thousands of people bringing them deals. Even me, people ask me, even as a, I call myself a newer investor, with, even with 17, uh, they ask me, how do you find deals? And I'm like, well, I don't really, I let them come to me. That's because I've built relationships over the course of this. So I have wholesalers bring me deals, realtors bring me deals necessarily. They have 10X that, 100X that to be honest. And you probably don't have that. So you're over there searching on Redfin and you're probably gonna find a decent deal, which I often talk about on this channel. It's all you need to start is a decent deal, but you have to build the skill sets to find great deals. Because great deals are found creatively through acquisition and creatively through how you rent it. And you'll see that a lot of these advanced investors will dive into Airbnbs, rooming houses and such, all right? But, it, but before even all of that, they generated their revenue streams first. You'll notice that on this channel, I, I quit my job, all right? And this is another little quick segue. It's important though, okay? So with they, okay, they've got all the more resources than you. You knew that, all right? They know how to do it because they've been doing it longer, all right? I know how to do it a little bit better than maybe the average viewer because I've been doing it longer, um, but also, 
they're creating revenue streams that create safety nets. So what is it that most of these entrepreneurs do? Like, are they just making all their money in real estate? Why is it that bigger pockets doesn't just make all their money necessarily on their passive income? They don't. They make money on the podcast. They make money, uh, sure, maybe flipping homes, but also doing syndications and such. <clears throat> and they make money in other ways. Let's say Ryan Pineda, he flips houses. Graham Stephan, he's a realtor, or was. Uh, now he's an influencer. Um, me, Kevin, you know, what? They, they all have, you know, he's an influencer as well. But even me, when I quit my job, I didn't go from quitting my job to retired on a beach. I quit my job and became self-employed. So I ended up just replacing my job income, all right, from my uh, IT job that wasn't doing anything for real estate and probably taking a bunch of my time for it. And it was a great job, made 150,000 a year by the time I left it. Um, and then uh, I went to make a property management company. Now I manage rooming houses um, if for other people and such. And then I made a construction company. I created multiple sources of revenue, just like a lot of these entrepreneurs do. I mean, Jared Norton's a wholesaler. I mean, a lot of people become wholesalers, realtors, stuff like that. That's because they're generating another source of revenue than taking that money and then putting it into real estate because they know most of the time it's not going to be a free deal. Most of the time, that's how it's going to work out. You're not going to get some slam dunk every single time, knocking to the park, even as the most advanced investor. Even Pace talks about half the time, yes, are all his creative finance deals free? Like, no, but the ROI is so great that it's good. So I, you know, I just say all this because I have a business partner who's, you know, and two of them actually, who are just upset when we left a lot of money in the deal. And they're not understanding that real estate is a tool that beyond getting these free houses, which is possible and sensational and all that, what the power of real estate is, is that when you factor in time, the, the element of time, you always win. Okay, so I have a deal, my very second deal, I, I have $60,000 left in that deal, it's terrible, the ROI is awful, but still, over time, with appreciation and tax and principal pay down and all that, I will win. Okay, I will eventually take that money and put it somewhere else, and I, uh, you know, I can either sell it or, or, or maybe just over time, I just wait for it to grow in value, maybe it becomes my nest egg, eventually it gets paid off, and then it's part of my retirement plan, but eventually I will win. You throw in the factor of time, that's what you cannot do in a flipping business, that's what you cannot do in a wholesaling business or in, or in any other, unless you grow it to the point where it doesn't need you anymore in which case you have something entirely different, not in self-employment anymore. Um, so, but unless you're gonna create an automated business, which is extremely hard to do, real estate is very effective at retiring you and being a long-term source of wealth. I can make you, if you follow certain advice, most entrepreneurs can make you a millionaire in 10 years, but if you try it in five, you will almost guarantee bankruptcy, right? Like, it's one of those things where if you go too fast, above where your revenue streams are bringing you, then it can really, really hurt you. And a lot of investors have those stories of when they almost nearly went broke trying to buy good deals. So I just make you all aware of that. What is the point of this video? The point is that first you're gonna have to get yourself in a very stable position, okay? Don't try to do it when you're in tons of credit card debt and stuff like that where you're trying to, like, and when I say credit card debt, I mean that loosely. Yes, there are ways to make credit cards the credit card debt, your method of flipping. And absolutely, you can buy houses on credit cards. You can, you know, so I'm not talking about really that. That's really kind of like you trying to make good debt using bad debt. That's probably a little bit of a different scenario. I'm talking about if you're just, haven't even started and you're not really in the most stable position, you probably want to make some source of income. And remember, even if it's real estate related, that's fine. You know, property management or being a realtor or flipping houses or whatever, that those are jobs. Make that stable platform and then funnel that money into real estate. You're finding that millionaires are doing this still. Um, so, and even if you are in a stable platform, um, you, you're like, you know, there's some millionaires who come to me and ask for mentorship advice and, much, and how much money they have. Well, how much money do you need to do for real estate? Well, technically zero, like I mentioned, but also just remember that your hundreds of thousands of dollars that you have saved up in the bank, if you don't figure out how to get your money out, if you don't figure out these uh, these free strategies, then you're gonna have an opposite problem. You're gonna burn through your cash exceedingly fast. And so you do need to learn how to do this. But once again, all this video comes down to is you need to learn, you need to put the reps in. How can you learn it without sinking money into deals? You're gonna end up doing that. All right, but you do need to figure out how do we get them for free? How do we creatively finance and structure this? So all of that to say, I just don't want to have someone start this and be in a bad position or, or think to themselves, oh, well, I mean, yeah, sure, I only have $500 like Devin did, but I'm going to go get a lot of free real estate. I'm 
pretty resourceful. Uh, most of the millionaires you see on the channel are much more resourceful than me, uh, who are who are doing a lot better than me. And uh, that's how they survived. That's how they survived messing up because you will mess up because you are new. So just uh, wanted to say all that in this video. Uh, hopefully uh, helped out anyone out there. But if you have any questions, comment below. Let me know and I will talk to you all very soon.